Ashok. So today I am going to uh, give a small introduction about uh, SIEM and OSAC. We will move to the first slide. So basically, uh, security information and event management is a term used for uh, software and product services which combines security information management and security event management. These are of two parts and it combined part we name it as security information and event management. Um, this system basically sits in your network and it gets all the logs and uh, all the alerts generated by the uh, systems and, and do analysis on it and then create events alerts based on those logs. So uh, this SIEM is having uh, some of the capabilities, these are some of the capabilities which include data aggregation, correlation, alerting, dashboard, compilation returns and forensic analysis. First we will see what is data aggregation. Data aggregation uh, is the process of collecting is the process of collecting logs from various systems uh, in your network. Uh, basically those systems no need to be homogenic. Uh, in real time it is going to be heterogeneous. So logs can be coming from your systems, your servers, uh, your local servers. Uh, your uh, uh, switches, routers, so all these logs will be collected in a centralized place and these logs will be aggregated and the correlation between these logs will be analysed and uh, based on those analysis decisions will be made and correlation is the process of uh, is relating events between two systems. Let us say you have a router and a server. Uh, and route uh, goes through the router to the server. So uh, there is going to be a, a common uh, package and and relation between these two things. So uh, these will be compared and sometimes uh, in botnet kind of a network so many botnets will do the similar kind of process. So in that cases we can uh, we can detect uh, the botnet cases. So that is one of the property and alerting uh, let us say if, if someone started attacking your system like your server on uh, SSL uh, port 443. So in that case you need to know what attack is going on and those process will be logged into the server and the server will uh, send, it, send its data to the SIEM uh, center basically it is another system which runs. So those logs will be analysis and we have to uh, there might be already some alerts which is written by default those will create alerts these alerts will be uh, monitored by the system admin and he will take necessary actions sometimes it will be automated and dashboard is a kind of a, a web user based interface or you can send you can say a centralized interface where you can see all the data collection analysis and the action taken alerts and a complete view of your security systems and Compilation is the process of creating a report basically for auditing uh, a open op like a standard report and return end is the process of storing your log data in a long term storage. See uh, logs are going to be generated every second and it is going to be very huge terabytes of logs will be generated in every day in huge network it is going to be huge and these log need to be stored. stored. We are storing this because of uh, like say if, if an attack happens. So it is not necessary that you, sh you could have uh, directly, you could have immediately spotted the attack. Sometimes it happens that it is a new attack which is unknown and uh, after the attack is happened or after the damage is done, you need to know how it happens. So you need to have the logs. So unless you have the logs stored in your system, you cannot do that. That is where the forensic analysis do. So basically you store these logs. And then these logs should be searchable and searchable based on our requirements. Like say if you want a log which is generated in a particular server from uh, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. You, you need to have a, uh, this SIEM system should provide a facility to search that particular uh, time interval logs. And in that log you need to search a particular protocol like SSL, uh, who, who made SSL connections. HTTPS servers, so those kind of inf information it should provide. 
and as I said uh, security information and event management has two parts the first part is security information management and second part is security event management. Security information is the part where it collects the logs and stores and uh, stores it for the after usage like uh, it do uh, it, it can create reports it can analyze the log files and it do the indexing so that to make the searching easier uh, basically this is for forensic and security event management is more of a, a real time systems where every event will be triggered based on your logs like let's say if, if someone uh, tries to log into your server uh, so immediately you want to know who is uh, trying to log in uh, so this system will monitor the logs and it will immediately create an alert so the system uh, admin will note down someone is uh, logging trying to log in so if it is unauthorized login then he will cut the connection and that can also be automated if someone unauthorizedly logging into your system you can write a uh, automated response so that it will close that port for some time or it may uh, block that particular IP and based on the logs these logs can be normalized like critical logs normal logs like normal user login will be a usual uh, usual uh, thing which happens every day employees comes into your office and or students come into your labs and they log in so those are not a critical one those are normal logs but if someone tries to log into your server and that to particularly remotely from some other IP it's a critical one because there's a possibility that attack can happen and that kind of uh, normalization can be done with uh, security event management and we have console view which is again the dashboard uh, which gives all the, the complete view of what is happening and what are the alerts created, the critical things and we will see the example of OSAC for this uh, security event management and as I said it can automatic alerting can also be done so we will go to next slide so this picture sh shows an overall idea of uh, how the SIM is placed in your network as you can see it sits in the middle and it, it will be connected to heterogeneous systems like it can be connected to your servers uh, your windows servers ubuntu servers and it, it can be connected to your firewalls wi-fi networks dhcp so lot of uh, different uh, logs will be coming into siem these siem these logs will be categorized and it will be processed and uh, corresponding reports and analysis will be generated next okay siem there are a lot of vendors online which is providing uh, a lot of their products and uh, some applications and products like router kind of thing it's a physical product physical server they will provide you this open this particular open source security information management was osim is a open source uh, software for siem and this is developed by alien vault uh, which is one of the widely used uh, software in current scenario and it is still open source which is uh, supported by a community contributors and OSIM basically it make use of uh, already existing softwares open softwares like uh, OSIM, uh, OpenVNS and SNOT and uh, those things for doing different functionalities of SIM which I explained in a previous slides and there is another important thing which is called uh, alien vault open thread exchange there is, this is very interesting because this exchange will tell OSIM how the, uh, the reputation of the IP whether the IP is good or whether the IP is already involved in some other attacks so things like that will be uh, shown this is basically happen like uh, from all the installation of OSIM uh, the data will be collected in a centralized system let us say if uh, some attacks happen in USA uh, in California or somewhere and uh, those images those logs will be collected uh, in the centralized system and if that attack is confirmed then the system reputation will be de decreased so if that happens so many times then the IP address reputation will be so low uh, and the next time when whenever this in whenever the same connection or some some connection goes into some other network where OSIM is installed it will alert the admin that this is a, the reputation of this IP is less and there is a possibility of attack and it is done by crowdsourcing collecting information from various 
sources and you can visit this website to get to know more about this open thread exchange we will move to next slide this one shows a basic architecture of OSIM where uh, you can see lot of open source uh, open source softwares are sitting in and uh, you, uh, it does all the it does all, all the requirements for uh, SIM to meet the SIM requirements like uh, data policies it have the correlation of logs it will uh, do the risk analysis taxonomy things. So, first we need to once the uh, OSIM is installed in your system it will it, we, it need to detect what are the pre existing what are the systems which is connected uh, how many uh, uh, how many systems you have connected how many routers you have connected basically the components of the networks has to be detected. So, it use nmap for asset uh, discoveries assets is nothing but your systems and router which is connected in that network where OS OSIM is installed and netmap is a open source and it is widely used for access discoveries and the another software uh, which is ntop and ntop is a network based uh, software uh, it listens to the ports and it, it basically listens snips the uh, network connectivities and the packages in it and if some kind of uh, unwanted behaviors happens it will alert uh, there's a there will be a set of rules in it uh, and it matches that rules if that rule matches it will uh, do accordingly what it what the rules is like sometimes it is alert sometimes it is to uh, let it go like uh, without alert and sometimes it is a normal uh, traffic. So, it would not alert some kind of thing. So, you can also insert new alerts in that and the next one is vulnerability, vulnerability assessment. So, vulnerability assessment this particular software uses open VAS which is again a open source software and uh, after you install OSIM it, it does a vulnerability assessment. Vulnerability assessment is nothing but it checks each and every component of your network and see the possible vulnerabilities. Sometimes your systems may not be up to date and the previous uh, software which is I mean the older software may have a vulnerability like uh, let us say open uh, SSL 1.0.1 we have a uh, uh, hot bleeding attack vulnerability and it, it is recently done. So, it is been updated and still many servers are running in this open source like making SSL open SSL 1.0.1 version which is not updated. So, uh, again it is possible for uh, uh, I mean possible before do an attack on them. So, keeping your system updated will reduce lot of uh, attacks possible attacks. So, those details this software will tell you what are the so possible attacks that can happen. Next is threat detection. So, here is where uh, the OSAC comes in. Uh, OSAC uh, does this thing like uh, it will collect all the data basically the log details from all the systems and it has some set of rules and these rules will be uh, compared with the decoded logs and if something uh, matches uh, it will create an alert and again this alert is going to be of different ranges. So, if, if some operation is usual those alerts are going to be usual alerts and it may not generate an alert if uh, some alerts are so critical which happens very rarely those kind of uh, high alert will be generated where the system admin need to address these alerts. And we will say a little bit we will see little bit about OSAC uh, it is basically a host based intrusion based intrusion detection system which is uses log log files of the systems. Uh, in every system or uh, router or the component which is in uh, network like firewall everything creates a log files. So, these log files are very much useful if it is uh, present in a centralized systems like those logs you cannot uh, actually relate those log, some logs in two different system like say in a, in a, in a network we have some uh, 250 systems and it is not easy to relate all the logs like for an example you want to have the logs which is generated from 4 o'clock 10 minutes to 4 o'clock 15 minutes it is a huge data and we cannot manually do that. So, these systems does the thing automated these things and it will give us a proper view of what is happening and what happened in the logs and if something serious happens it will alert 
and uh, as I said alerting it does a time based alert if, if you, you can configure this OSAC to create a alert for particular events and it does a file integrity check like uh, let us say uh, in Ubuntu there is a uh, directory called bin which is used by the system. So, usually those bin directory files will not be changed it is used by the uh, system for running services and executable files. So, if some attacks happen some virus attack virus affects these files then the virus will start changing the data of those files. So, this OSAC will detect those kind of changes and immediately alert the uh, concerned person to look into it. So, that we can prevent lot of uh, uh, data loss or even we can uh, secure the possible attacks and after that we can also do a active response like I mentioned previously you, you can also create a automated response like uh, if someone logs into your system uh, unauthorized if he makes three times uh, like four times wrong password for root then you can block the system automatically by adding a rule in the firewall IP table uh, by using OSAC. So, this OSAC is uh, works like the OSAC, there is going to be OSAC server this server can be a single server or it can be a multiple server uh, usually it's go it will be a single server which high configuration which is cap which is capable of doing lot of computation and uh, with high network bandwidth and this server will be connected with other systems uh, in other systems all in all the systems we will have a OSAC agent. Uh, despite of what type of the system it is like if it is a windows we have a separate window agent for that it is a linux we have a window, uh, linux agent for that. If we have a, a IOS it have a separate agents like firewall for everything we have a separate agents these agents basically collect the logs from the uh, host or wherever it is installed and send it to the OSAC for processing and we will uh, see a some attack scenario let us say uh, someone in IIT Delhi uh, tries to uh, exploit the vulnerability which I mentioned SSL version 1.01 uh, and tries to uh, make a hot bleed attack uh, to IIT Bombay server and uh, let us assume we have a centralized SIM installation where the open thread exchange uh, uh, information is available and we have open VNS and uh, which basically already alerted us what are the uh, vulnerabilities and what are the possible attacks. So, let us see how it can happen like let us say if 103.27.9.20 is a IP of IIT Delhi and it connects to IIT Bombay through a firewall since a firewall uh, does not block this particular attack since this is a SSL connection and 443 port should always be open for SSL connection. So, there would not be any rule for uh, this particular port. So, it will allow and and it will connect to uh, this system uh, which is a server 103.21.125.131 which is uh, which can be accessible from uh, anywhere in the world. So, when this particular uh, IP address connections made so, OSIM which is already installed in the network will alert that this IP particular IP is having lower reputation. This is this information we got it from OTX uh, open thread exchange which I explained previously. So, it means that this uh, particular IP address have already uh, involved in such kind of uh, uh, attacks in somewhere else and it is known for uh, its attacks and things like that. So, first alert will be created by SIEM saying uh, this IP can possibly make a attack and after that the open VAS have already alerted that uh, there is a vulnerability in our system which is basically we have installed a older version of open SSL and it is vulnerable to hot bleed attack. So, when the attack happens uh, in the on the server we have a OSIM uh, agent which is installed this OSIM OSAC agent will send logs to the OSAC server. OSAC server which is a part of OSIM uh, will send this detail to the OSIM, OSIM will tell that this attacks happens. So, in this way you can detect a attack in real time and you can take necessary steps. 
and uh, this is an example of an attack and we can we will see a use, use case let us say you have a lab of some uh, 200 or 100 systems and you have a uh, server where you have all the uh, mark sheets marks of the students and the assignment given to the students and the uh, upcoming assignments and all those things and you usually used to log in that server from a particular machine let us say your desktop as a root user to make the changes and uh, let us say if some students uh, try to exploit this and if he wants to change his marks like let us say he failed in a subject so he want to make himself fall so he tries to log into as a log uh, as a, a root to make changes so what will happen usually he will not be getting access in your system to your system which is your personal system so if he would have installed OSAC in that uh, server first thing we will get is an alert that someone is trying to log in as a root user from the lab system it will tell you the IP addresses it will tell you the time and it will tell you the root user and how many times he tries to uh, he tried actually for logging in and the next thing even if he successfully logged in uh, he, he will try to change the files which is having the marks, marks so when the file is changed the hash value will be changing so each file in a, in a system each file will have a hash values so hash value will change it is actually a checksum value checksum value will change every time when there is a change in a file so this OSAC will monitor that value and it will make another alert saying this, this some, some change is being made in, in this file so that you can come back and see what is the changes and you can if you have a backup you can also crash verify and next thing let us say if you are not sitting there I'll, and you want uh, an email uh, whenever this thing happens so you can configure so that the email can be sent to your email alert will be received in your mailbox so you can take immediate responses another thing is you can block the particular IP like when someone tries to log in like five times and he fails to log in as root then you can automate you can write a code to uh, automatically insert a rule in the IP table or you can automatically block the IP addresses and this comes to uh, this presentation introduction comes to an end we will move on to the demo of OSAC so we will do some exercises uh, from this PDF uh, which is OSAC exe we will go to terminal and we will check whether the OSAC is already installed and ls is a list file command uh, usually OSAC is installed under uh, VAR folder in Ubuntu so we will check so VAR so OSAC is installed and we will check what is inside this OSAC lsvar slash OSAC these are some of these subdirectories which is having uh, active responses bin etc logs we will see uh, what is inside bin and uh, these are the executables which is used by OSAC for doing the, uh, its functionalities so we will see an example first we will go into this directory change directory cd slash var slash OSAC slash bin we will see an example of OSAC control sudo slash OSAC if and control we will see the status and password as you can see these are the main demons run, run by OSAC OSAC monitor the uh, usually it monitors the log files which is connected from various uh, systems and log controller do the analysis of those log file and system check does the uh, uh, like checksum checking and permissions and all other behaviors of this of a file and analysis D does the analysis and see the correlation among the events or alert generated by them and mail D will be used for uh, sending emails and exe cd is used for generating uh, active responses and we will see okay. 
and if you want to know uh, uh, like uh, what else these com uh, specific exe can do you can always do sudo slash the command uh, space hyphen hyphen help and you can see uh, we can do start stop restart uh, status enable and disable in this lecture in this demo we are going to use restart more often to restart the OSAC services and we will we'll see how to observe OSAC activities. So, the first matter is by uh, observing the local host web interface like local host slash OSAC will Mozilla to this one. like you can see the uh, events which is generated by OSAC and you can see the date and time and the rule ID and the level of alert and uh, the comment of the alert the description of the alert we can also search a particular alert using this thing and uh, this this integrated check basically just all the files which is current which is recently uh, changed you can see the date and time and the file name and status uh, shows the overall uh, status of the system like uh, what uh, rule is often used and how what level of alerts is often generated uh, we will go to about and we will go to OSAC website and uh, we will go to first step with OSACs and this page have the basic detail you needed to uh, for working with OSAC and we will go to uh, reference manual this is the documentation of OSAC where you can get all the details of how to manage and how to install uh, how to change a rule write a rule we will go to main and and another method too is by observing the log files. So, the log file is present in one of the directory of OSAC like OSAC slash log slash alert slash alert log. So, we will see this and clear sudo tile. Tile function uh, uh, usually tiles the file, it will print few uh, last, last lines of a file. So, F will keep it printing and you can see the alerts generated by OSAC and basically these alerts on the alerts which you can observe from the web interface are same. Uh, so, you can use any one of these things uh, let us see you can observe this like refresh and the rule number 5501 and here also you will have 5501 previous one rule number 5402 5402. So, you can observe any one of these things and keep the other closed. And the another thing is OSAC logs. So, OSAC log have all the activities done by OSAC like uh, uh, when the alert is generated and what generator and what happens when OSAC is restarted and if you made some changes and if you get some errors. So, this file will be very much useful. So, again you can use the tile slash f for uh, knowing the latest uh, errors or latest status of OSAC and we will move to the exercise. The first exercise is doing SSH uh, for uh, doing SSH we need to install a open SSH open SSH server and press y for Ubuntu in you can give a apt install apt install open ssh uh, this is a package uh, which is used for installing open ssh servers we will give the password and press s yes, uh, continue the complete the installation for for doing uh, ssh we need to do some changes in the vm so we will go to network network setting adapter change uh, attach to net to bridge adapter and change it to the ethernet if you are connected to ethernet cable and press ok and we need to disconnect and reconnect it disconnect and reconnect 
and to the know the to know the IP address, uh, the simple way is to go to connection information. Uh, you can see 10.129.26.43 is the IP address of this particular VM. So we'll see whether it is connectable. We'll go to host command. We'll do ping. Ping. Paste. And and it is reachable. So the next thing we will do SSH connection, we will use PuTTY, PuTTY is a tool used for creating SSH connections and we will paste the IP, we will click OK and here click yes and then uh, type root and password. So I am uh, stopping Ashok here mainly because this is what you will be doing in tomorrow's lab and the goal of the talk that he gave so far was to get you to understand what it is and let me just summarize in a minute uh, what he was trying to tell you that you are going to actually work with an installation of a software called OSAC, open source security analysis tool or whatever which is part of the bigger framework called OSIM, uh, security information management system. And uh, you will be asked to do many exercises, the PDF file, the, the video that he is showing you will be available to you in the lab, we will not have a view, we will not have direct interaction in each center, but your coordinators will be able to provide you this video where he has run through some of the steps. The exercises are very well documented in a PDF file and you are told do this, do that, do this, do that and he was trying to show you how to do that and giving you part of the demonstration. You will have 3 hours tomorrow afternoon to try it out. And as you try each exercise, it is not necessary that you have to complete all of them, but whatever you can try to understand, talk to coordinators, talk to your classmates and friends and try to find out how it has been set up to detect particular type of attacks. That if a student changes a file or if somebody logs in as root, you can see the alert actually happening and you can see the value of setting up this system and when you actually use it in the real world, you have to of course tailor it for the events that you want. The exercises are take you through some scenarios or use cases, toy uh, demonstrations of the value of this tool. And this will be the first step to securing or security assurance to set up tools like this, tools that monitor activities on the network in a real time basis. They do not get tired, they do not go to sleep, they watch and whenever alerts are needed they will generate. He was talking about email alerts, you can even have SMS alerts. So these side of depending on the level of uh, service that you need to give, you can escalate. This is called escalation matrix. If an alert is not attended within a certain time, then alert can go to somebody else. You can have an escalation matrix and then therefore the, all the people in the organization who are responsible for security will then be have to uh, understand what to do, how to respond and so on and that is part of the bigger picture of assuring security in your organization. So now I will uh, thank Ashok for doing his part.